to a problem here with the uh, budget set of a consumer. So a consumer is limited to buying two goods, good Y, good X. Uh, they can buy 20 units of good Y if they spend all their money on good Y. They can buy 20 units of good X if they spend all their money on good X. Uh, or they can buy some linear combination of the two. Um, our, our income is determined by uh, the amount of, of good Y, Oops. the amount of, of good X we're going to buy, and the price of good X, plus the, the number of units of good Y we're going to buy times the price of good Y. And so this, this is uh, the, the amount of money we're spending on good X and the amount of money we're spending on good Y summed together will be all of our income. If we spend all of our money, uh, then we're on this budget line. Uh, and, and we can uh, look at this first example here if we're at point A uh, then we're spending 10 units well we're spending our money to, to purchase 10 units of good Y but we don't know how many units of good X we're purchasing so to, to do that we need to go in and figure out a couple things we need to figure out what the price of Y is and what our income is and uh, to do that we can first assume that we're purchasing all, all good X. So we're spending all of our money on good X. We're going to be at this point purchasing no Y. And we know that the price of X, we're given the price of X is five bucks. Uh, and if that's the case, the price of X is going to be five times the 20 units that we're purchasing plus the price of good Y, which we don't know, but we do know that at this point we're buying no Y. And so we know that, that this part of the budget constraint is going to be zero. And so that's equal to our income. So five times, five bucks times the 20 units is going to be equal to our income, which is equal to 100 bucks. So now we can go back and figure out the price of Y if we go to the other end of this budget constraint and say, you know what, let's, let's assume now we're spending all of our money on good Y. Well, if that's the case, then the, uh, we're not going to be buying any of good X, so this is going to go away. Uh, we know that that's good, the, the number of X goes to zero, don't have to worry about that. But now we have to deal with, with Y. Uh, and so we, we don't know what the price of Y is, but we know that the price of Y times the number of units of Y that we're purchasing, that should be PY times 20 is going to equal our income, which is equal to 100 bucks. And so from that, we can do some really high-end algebra to show that the price of Y is $5. So now, how many, if we're, if we're at point A, how many units of X can we purchase? Well, if we've got a hundred bucks and we're buying ten units of Y at five dollars a piece, then we got fifty bucks left over. And if the price of Y is, uh, of X is also five dollars, then if we use that fifty bucks to buy oh to buy good X, then we should be able to buy ten units of good X. What happens now? if the price of Y changes. So, Y has been $5. Now you go into the store and all of a sudden you're fired up because one of the two goods that you purchase just decreased in price. So, if Y went from $5 to $2.50, we're going to see this budget constraint, this budget set, rotate around this point. Right, nothing's changing about X. The price of X isn't changing. But as the price of Y drops, you know you can buy more of good Y. And so this, this budget line rotates. And so let's say it goes, if the price were cut in half, price were cut to, to 250, so our new price for Y, $2.50, uh, the price of X is still at $5. And our income is still a hundred bucks. Well, now we can buy forty units 
of good Y if we spend all of our money on good Y. And so the consumer is going to move to some higher indifference curve. Let's say it's up here. U2. They're going to be better off, and now they're going to be consuming 25 units of good Y and say, well, I don't know what to put in there because I don't want to do that high in math. But you can figure out now, based on their, uh, their budget constraint, if they were now producing, if, if this was the new indifference curve and they were now consuming 25 units of Y, they would be consuming some, some lesser units uh, of good X, but they would be better off because they would have moved from this indifference curve U1 to indifference curve U2. Uh, making the consumer pretty fired up that the good Y is cheaper now.